Welcome to another Excel Athlete Fitness video. Today's video we're going to make a dashboard. So in front of you you see two tables. The first table is just some data from a uh, performance analysis system. It's pumped out three columns of data that we're probably interested in. Three areas of play for these, uh, for these individual athletes there. Possession rate, passing rate and assist score. Below there you'll see a benchmark for each position. So we're going to combine these two tables and make a little dashboard. The first thing I want to do to get myself started, give myself something to work with, is insert a simple chart. I'm just going to put that out to the right here. Next thing I want to do is something that you probably haven't tried before and that's to insert a form control. So if you go to the developer tab and click on spin button you can then draw, I'm just going to draw it on the graph here, a little spin button. At the moment you can click it all you like, nothing really happened. Before I go on I'll just mention that if you haven't got the developer tab viewing in your uh, toolbar, you have to activate that tab. So <coughs> a quick little Google search will show you how to do that. I need to right click on this spin button and format the control. What I want to use this control for is to scroll through the 15 players. So I want to set the minimum value to 1, maximum value to 15. That way I can click it and scroll it and just stay within that 1 to 15 range. What I also need to do to really get things working is have a cell link. So if I click inside cell link and click on a cell somewhere, it'll tell me, there you go, up and down what value we're in. Moving right along, I want to use now that number to pick the player for me. It's a function called index, and it's a very simple function. It basically says, where's your table, and what row number and what column number do you want to uh, pull out from that table. I'd already pre-named that range player names, so excuse me for that but I'm going to now use that value we just created as my row number. Column number is optional in this case because we've only selected one column. So I can close that off. Index, range, row number. And there we go. Player 6. If I click the button, it moves with us. Now we can use the trusty V lookup formula to pull out the data that we need. Excuse me, got that in the wrong order. There we go. Look up what. Where do I want to look it up? What column is the answer number in? We're looking for position rate and that is in one, two, three, four. And we want an exact match. If I drag that across, I'll need to edit that column number. I'm doing it manually now. There is a way to do it really quickly, but I don't want to slow this particular tutorial down by going through that. It's using a function called the columns function. All right, so uh, if we click back on this graph, we'll see that it's still mapping up the top here. So I'm going to drag that down to our new data range that we've just created. And already we've got a cool little dynamic chart that clicks around. So a few things missing from the chart, so we can't congratulate ourselves too much just yet. I need to right click, select data, and just make sure that the name of the athlete appears there. Now that's better. Get rid of that. Give ourselves a bit more room. Actually, we'll keep that because we could make use of that later. So here we go. Already, quite nice looking little chart. What I want to bring into it is something that I've really only learned to do quite recently, and, and I think it's fantastic. Um, it's the ability to overlap bar graphs so that you can have one value behind another one. To make this dashboard really cool, I'm going to add another form control. It's called a checkbox. 
I'm going to stick it up at the top of the chart here and I'm going to call it show benchmark and what this will do is allow the user to turn the benchmark on or off checkbox really is simple yes or no just like the spin button we have to right click on it and format it the only thing we have to do this time is give it a cell reference and what you'll see is when there's a tick in the box it shows true when there's not it shows false now this is where it gets uh, I wouldn't say complicated but you really have to be comfortable with the different formulas to, to be able to work through this easily we we'll use an if function equals if this equals true then we want to show the information so I want to go VLOOKUP the player that we've selected and this little array here bring back column 2 because this is telling me the player's position what I'm going to do one more little trick which uh, I'll explain in a second is if it is false we don't want to show any information on the graph to do that you can do something called NA you would have all seen NA appear by accident when you're entering formulas because you've done something wrong or there's a reference not available you can use NA to your advantage when using um, dynamic graphs because NAs do not plot sometimes blank values plot at zero and it can make things look a little bit messed up so if I uncheck this we'll see it comes up NA and for once that's actually a good thing and so now what I want to do is I want to find the benchmarks for that particular position so I'm going to do another VLOOKUP I want to look up midfield in this table and I want to pull out what's in columns 3, 4 and 5 so I'm going to drag that across and just quickly edit the data great so now we've got the two series that we want to plot on our graph this is where it gets really interesting and as I mentioned I've only uh, recently learned this trick myself so I still uh, pretty captivated by it what I want to do is plot another series on the graph so I'm going to select data and go add there's lots of ways you can do this but this is the way I'm going to do it I'm going to call the the series benchmark and I am going to select the values that we just created with our VLOOKUP equation okay I'm going to make sure that it also has the correct axis labels all right so at the moment it's it's okay you know it's it's doing a pretty good job but I'd really like to be able to make it look even better so what I want to do is um, put one series on one axis and another series on the other axis so the one that I want to have on the secondary axis so on the right hand vertical axis is our data series so I'm going to format data series I'm going to click secondary axis at the moment it kind of doesn't look that great because it's sitting right behind so what I want to do is start playing around with 
the widths of the lines so that it starts to give a little bit more feature to it and looks a bit more interesting. Um, second thing I need to do before I start changing the colors is make sure the axes are exactly the same and that's not the case at the moment so I'm going to format the axis and a little quick scan of the table tells me that no values go above 70 so I'm going to use that as my maximum score fix it at 10 we don't want too many grid lines on there do the same for this axis fix, fix, fixed Great, so that's fixed now. We can actually get rid of it. People don't need to see that. I'm going to format the grid lines, make them just a really light grey. I want to change the colour of the series at the back to again a, just a, a little light colour that doesn't really stick out at you. Whereas I want to change the athlete's data to something that really does stick out. So I'm going to make that read. What I also think I'll do is just add a data label. So things are looking a little bit better. Uh, not perfect yet. I think I should be adding a, a title to the chart. And also what I want to do is just lock these form controls onto the graph. If you haven't done grouping before, you have to right click and select group when you have everything else selected. So let's see what this looks like. So at the moment I have made a chart, as you can see, values change both the benchmark and the player score. You can turn the benchmark off or have it on, it's up to you, and things are looking reasonably good. I'm just going to change the format of this, change the grid lines to a lighter colour. Keep a thick one outside. Change this to make it stand out a little bit more. Take away the border of the graph because often that can help quite a lot and the last thing I like to do is take the grid lines away from the graph. I'm going to hide all the rows above and below where we're working. So I've selected a row, I click Control shift down arrow and it selects everything until the sheet runs out. So here we are, relatively nice looking dashboard, it's got the data in a table, it's got a chart, you can scroll up and down, work through players, turn the benchmark off and on. So real dashboards that you see out in the, uh, in the, in the workforce today have got several interactive charts like this all combined into one dashboard, it makes for a very nice viewing experience. If you want to get a copy of the spreadsheet, drop me a line. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you next trick and we'll learn some more Excel.